what do we mean by artificial atoms uh-huh. a natural atom is defined by a signature spectrum right a set of wavelengths or frequencies that the atom emits and absorbs okay this defines the atom right. that is what that is what i mean by an atom uh-huh. in this context okay so an artificial atom is essentially a circuit which has similar spectrum. spectrum and everybody who has worked with any electronic circuits or electrical circuits for that matter knows that a simple lc resonator has a single frequency okay so what's lc l inductor and an uh, capacitor okay. a resonant tank circuit okay. in electronics as it is called an l and a c mm. that is an inductor and a capacitor, capacitor together okay. will form a resonant circuit which has one characteristic frequency okay so it absorbs and emits light only at that frequency mm. okay okay mm. so this you can say is the you are now created an artificial atom you at least if not an artificial atom it is it is something that has a characteristic spectrum spectrum of the at- uh, spectrum. Okay. Mm-hmm. so, so spectrum n- is a light spectrum right yeah Huh. is spectrum by spectrum i mean any set of frequencies huh. at which this uh, okay. this entity hmm. this lc circuit emits or absorbs energy correct correct, correct. okay huh. and now uh, it turns out for various reasons you need not a normal inductor but a special kind of an inductor to realize something that is more close to natural atoms mm. because when you shine light into something like hydrogen or sodium it's not just one line mm. that appears it's a whole bunch of lines mm. right i mean different different wavelengths are absorbed mm. but uh, as i just said an lc circuit has only one line ah. so how do you then create multiple lines of course you can think of putting multiple lc and circuits together <laughs> but that's not the that's not an optimal solution yeah. so what people have done is they have made a non linear lc circuit okay. a non linear lc circuit using a special kind of an inductor huh. which is thanks to superconductivity this is exactly where superconductivity comes in okay so can you help us understand superconductivity yeah uh-huh. superconductivity in very uh, layman's terms is there are certain materials when you uh, cool them down below mm. not every material but only some special class of materials which you cool them below a certain temperature they have they show zero resistance okay this is one primary property okay. zero resistance and they also expel all electric and magnetic fields from inside them okay. they are completely repellent to all electric and magnetic fields inside them so this is okay. this uh-huh. is called this in some sense defines what a superconductor is okay now so when from, you when you say there's zero resistance uh, so electrical I, resistance okay to the flow of current uh-huh. so when a normal conductor it's how do you heat water mm. in the olden days you just put a coil which was essentially a heater mm. and it was passing a current right and the resistance is what uh, you know the atoms and then energy yeah comes. the resistance of the uh, element right is what heats things okay for example a filament bulb heats up after some time because of this correct resistance, resistance. Okay. Uh-huh. now uh, this when you are trying to uh, deal with extremely tiny energies this heating is a big problem right so you want to isolate and this heating is a source of noise Correct. it's something that happens in an uncontrolled way right so it's a source of noise mm. so you want to isolate your system mm. from any such effect superconductivity naturally is a good choice okay. for that mm. but superconductivity as a physical principle is quite intricate i only gave you a how superconductors behave right but exactly what under what is the underlying mechanism of superconductivity is one of the uh, you know path breaking uh, results okay. of uh, quantum mechanics and uh, its achievements okay so what this special kind of inductor that we use mm. it's enabled by this property of superconductors so it's called a josephson junction uh, yeah. a josephson junction is essentially a superconductor and a small insulator and another superconductor it's like a sandwich okay two superconductors with a small insulator in between okay now this behaves as an inductor mm. with some special properties as in the inductance mm. which for normal inductors is 
a geometric property okay. meaning you wind a coil it becomes an inductor right no matter how much current flows through it this inductance won't change right but a josephson junction turns out to be something where you pass a certain amount of current mm. the inductance changes according to the current you pass in it ah. so what this means is when you put a capacitor a c a capacitance mm. across such an inductor mm. you get a nonlinear oscillator okay. meaning an oscillator which has not just one line but several lines and these several lines are not spaced harmonically harmonically meaning like the string for example a guitar string you pluck a guitar string you get one frequency the primary out and you also get all the higher harmonics right right right, right, right. those are called the overtones correct so i am not talking about overtones uh-huh. which are usually some integer times the fundamental frequency if the fundamental frequency is some f f not okay. say the a is 440 hertz mm. then the highest the so second harmonic will be 880 hertz and then 1320 hertz and so on okay we are not talking about equal spacing like that uh, we are talking about say 440 hertz and then something 600. with some 600 okay. hertz and then some five uh, some uh, 720 hertz some random spacing okay so this is a very characteristic feature of a nonlinear oscillator okay and this is exactly like an atom now ah uh. so this behaves like an atom because it has characteristic lines at but, which it absorbs and emits radiation okay but not rhythmically not of uh, constant lengths or uh, separations sorry i uh, what do you mean by constant lengths ha huh. so this uh, 0 to 600 then that's a 600 jump the spacing huh. between huh. frequencies huh. Huh. is huh. not the spacing between correct. frequencies is not linear. is not uniform correct uniform so yeah non-linear. it's not linear yes right. exactly but why is it important though why is that important is that is the closest we can get to right. simulating a natural no. atom okay and now why do we need these circuits it turns out that these circuits actually interact with radio frequency waves okay radio waves uh. or microwaves uh. and there is a lot of technology available in microwaves especially because of the uh, developments in the communication sector a lot of that electronics is available mm. so these devices become viable okay every time if uh, some technology is already there right. and you apply it it's that kind of an application clicks correct correct very true so that is the idea here uh-huh. so uh, we uh, use these artificial atoms to actually study light matter interaction in new regimes which are not new regimes as in the coupling of these atoms to the environment and to light by light i mean microwaves mm. which is also just another kind of light right that is you can now reach limits which are not possible with natural atoms mm. so you can actually validate the theories okay. and also they pose new physics uh, challenges right to us and we can we have to now evolve our theories according to that to overcome those challenges and to explain those new phenomena that we should